What up, webheads? It's your boy, DeMarco. And your other boy, Steven. Steven. <laughs> you guys ready to jump into some cool comic book stories? Let's do it. <laughs> you sound like that one guy from TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it, dude. <laughs> All right, it's music. Hello, hello, hello. I love that guy so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he he seems like he could be racist. Yeah, I'm always worried he's gonna say something. Super yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, every time I watch his videos, he's he's always talking. It sounds like he's talking shit to somebody, <laughs> and then I feel like, oh man, please don't do it. Please don't do it. And then he just keeps talking about crawfish. <laughs> so <laughs> as long as he keeps it there, I think we're okay. <laughs> But man, him and that that greasy slick <laughs> hair to the front dude, those are the, the best two white boys on TikTok. The other guy too, uh, I think I don't know his backstory, but I feel like he was a roadie for like a bunch of bands, and he has his hat. Like. Oh, uh, what's his name? The Squeezy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to follow any white dudes on tw- on TikTok unless they're uh, grimy looking or weird. <laughs> 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 you guys can keep your little clean cut white boys, your little Justin Bieber's to yourself. Uh, you know, I was thinking the other day, like, we got so spoiled with Marvel content last year mm-hmm. because we didn't get anything the year before, and now we don't have anything until May. I think this, I don't know if this is official or not yet, mm-hmm. but Moon Knight is supposed to drop in March. Oh, that would be good. So Moon Knight in March. Is that. Because they pushed everything. Because yeah. we were supposed to get Doctor Strange in March. Mm-hmm. But now that's May. I think we're getting, what, three movies this year? The Doctor Strange, Wakanda Forever, and... I think Thor is supposed to come out. Yeah, Love and Thunder. Year. Yeah, so we got three movies this year. Last year we had four. Yeah. So, one less movie. We, I, actually, we might have almost the same amount. Because the, the shows are... She-Hulk's supposed to come out later this year. Yeah. Uh, I think Miss Marvel's supposed to come out this year. I think... I think that might be late this year, early next year. Hmm. Oh, aren't we supposed to... Does that come out next year? The oh. Marvels? Uh, 2023, I think, yeah. Oh, okay. Does, when does Armor Wars come out? Next year, too? Probably. I don't feel like they've even started like filming that. Probably not. Is it Echo Show next year too? Maybe. They yeah. they keep changing it around. There's but. just so much stuff going on. I forget what I rate, it's, like what I read and what I see. I'm telling you, Phase Four is. I I I'm gonna say this now, and you guys can run it back if I'm wrong and if I'm right. <laughs> um, but I think Phase Four is gonna be better than Phase Three. Really? Yeah. Phase the first it, the oh. first Phase Four movie was Far From Home, right? No, that was still technically phase three. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they made that phase three still, but technically, yeah, it's still phase three. Hmm. So I think the first phase four movie was Black Widow. Hmm. Well, that was a from Far From Home to Black Widow. 2019 to... Wow. Yeah. That is a large gap. I forgot the the gap was even there. Because I think the... Black Widow was supposed to come out like right when the pandemic first started, I think. Yeah, I think sometime in like like May. Yeah. And then Eternals was supposed to come out after that, right? Or was Eternals supposed to come first? Eternals was supposed to come out, I think, November that year, 2020. Okay, yeah. Phase 4, Black Widow, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Doctor Strange, which we're getting in May, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder, July 8th. Uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, November 11th. The Marvels should come out in February of 2023. Mm. 
Guardians 3 in May, on May 5th of 2023. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, Quantumania, July of 2023. I can't wait for that one. And Fantastic Four is in Phase Four, so we should be getting some. And that's see, and that's not including any of the shows either. Yeah. So I let me backtrack what I said. It might not be Phase Four might not be better than Phase Three, but it's it's obviously going to be way bigger. Like the universe is significantly expanded. Yeah. No. Because before, yeah, like we had Cap, everybody else like on Earth, right? And then we had the Guardians of the Galaxy. But now it's like with all the multiversal stuff, Kang's still out there. Yeah. I mean, uh, and the sh- the shows are our phase four. So yeah. technically, like we've gotten WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, uh, Hawkeye. We're getting Moon Knight, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Secret Invasion, the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, See? Um, Ironheart, Armor Wars, uh, there's an Untitled Wakandan uh, series. See? And then the thing that I like now, too, is that, like, it's, now we have, like, not that Fisk is, like, a, a low-level, like, street criminal, but we have, like, these lower... Yeah, the street level. Street level, like, I'm running this city yeah. type stuff. And then we have, like, Kang, who is a multiversal, like, villain yeah. that has been running everything that we've seen so far. Yeah. And it, there's all these little bits and pieces in between, like. Yeah, I never thought about that. Because I, mean, I still get confused with the whole multiversal, like, what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. But... You had to think that King has actually been in everything that's happened in the MCU so far. It has been part of what he wants to happen yeah. and what needs to happen. Wow. And it's and it, I think it's interesting too that it seems like the MCU is kind of trying to make it feel like this multiversal thing is Doctor Strange's issue. Mm. Like he's causing it in some way or he's a part of why it's happening. When the timeline started converging in Loki, yeah, last year, so it's like it could it, have been only a matter of time before it actually, yeah, hit. And is what was I going to ask? Is Loki supposed to be in Doctor Strange? I think so. Oh, we're also getting. Uh, I don't think it's been officially announced yet, but we're getting a Halloween special. This year, really? Yeah, um, I guess the the film it's supposed to be relatively short, mm-hmm. uh, maybe only like yeah one episode thing. But the filming of it's only supposed to take two or three months. Uh, it's supposed to be a werewolf by night Ooh. Uh, special. So, so we have a werewolf by night, vampire by night. Mm-hmm. And then we're getting Blade, Moon Knight, so. Looks like we're getting some Midnight Suns action yeah, in there. What I'm saying is like, there's so many levels to Phase Four now. It's like, yeah, I, I, I think we talked about this before, yeah. but like, just the implications of where everything goes. Mm-hmm. Like, it, we're not just leading towards one thing like we did with the first no, Phase Threes or the first three phases, where mm-hmm. it's just all leading to Infinity War and uh, End Game. And like, that's the thing is, if okay, say we don't. Say we go through another three phases and we don't do like another end game thing where everybody meets together. Mm. You're still gonna have to end all those stories and like it's gonna be big. Yeah. And then if we have the Young Avengers or the Dark Avengers, and like the those aren't small teams. Like it's not just a, a whatever like the little Guardians move. Not that the Guardians are small. Yeah. But it's not just a little off the world team that just does their own thing. Like yeah. It's the it's the Avengers. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like, the Guardians don't need to come to Earth to mm-hmm. fix, you know, whatever armor war- wars or anything like no. that. That could just be, you know, Rhodey, Ironheart, mm-hmm. and maybe, like, some other Earthbound characters. I mean, in space, though, you got Celestials, like, destroying planets and whatever's going on with the other Eternals. Mm-hmm. Like, that could be Guardians and... 
maybe Captain Marvel, and then Miss Marvel's still on Earth or something. And it's like, yeah, you have all these characters being set up for potential end game level type movies, but in their own sort of and realm the in the universe. Yeah, with Harry Styles. Yeah. We'll see where all that goes. Let's see. I think also another prediction that I have is I think they're going to bring in. My prediction is that they bring in Miles Morales in Armor Wars. I really hope so. I, I, is there a deer? No, I mean, a squirrel. Oh. And I was on the tree just staring in the window. <laughs> um, I really hope they do bring in Miles. Yeah. Just because. At this point, yeah, I still want to see the MCU Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. I still want to see his story continue. Yeah. But I feel like it's time now to kind of add something new yeah. to the formula. Even though we just <laughs> had other versions of Spider-Man come in. Yeah. I think now is a good time to have a Miles Morales come in. Yeah, because you can, at this point, after that movie, you can have him dis- like not be in anything for a bit. Yeah. And... Like, he's probably going to have to be in, I would assume that he's going to show up in uh, Doctor Strange. Mm. Possibly. That'd be a good time to introduce him. But, like, oh, I was just saying, like, I know Tom Holland's probably going to be in Doctor Strange. Oh. Possibly. Eh. But after how it ended, I don't know. Yeah, I mean. It, he doesn't need to be there. I don't feel like he needs to. But that's what I'm saying is that if he doesn't if he doesn't need to be in the movie and it based off how the story seems like it's going, it doesn't seem like he needs to be there. He could be off screen for a while. Yeah. And then when if he if you guys are gonna do another trilogy with him, that's when you he's gonna be older. He's gonna visibly look older at that point. So why not have like just like in the comics where it's like they meet each other Kind of, or even like in the video game where he just takes him under his wing, trying to like Miles is trying to learn things by the mm. seat of his pants, and just send him off in his, on his way. Yeah, I mean, in, and, and that way you could you could even introduce him in Armor Wars because I'm assuming a new Spider-Man trilogy would happen after Armor Wars. Introduce him in Armor Wars. Like that way, he's in the MCU already, and then. I mean, they could even go the full, more comic accurate, and have him be introduced in Multiverse of Madness. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's from in the comics. He's from a different universe. Yeah. And so they can just there's already multiversal stuff going on. Just yeah. show a a black suited Spider Man swinging through New York or something, and people go crazy for that. Deal with who you're going to cast as him later on, and then you can still technically have Tom Holland be. A Spider-Man and a Miles Morales, if they decide to yeah, have I'm the reading universes the, cross. I'm reading the 2018 Miles Morales mm. Spider-Man, um, and both of them are in there. Yeah. I mean, I know how they got there, but both are in there, and they, like, yeah, you, but you have, like, the, the characters, like, Rhino's in the first couple issues, and he's like, are you the real spider-man or like the new guy and it's like but that like adds like that kind of like how marvel always adds like that fun like Mm. element to it like that would be fun yeah like just like you don't have to give me that every time but like when once you've introduced them and we see a a new spider-man that we've never seen before like it's like which one are you like the villains are confused like everybody's trying to figure out what the hell's going on like I'm okay with that. Yeah. Just get him in there. They need to introduce uh, Nova, too. He's badass. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. Oh, they should bring Viv, too, uh, from uh, the Vision. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and She-Hulk, they got to... Yeah, that, that Young Avengers team is going to be stacked. Mm-hmm. Really stacked. That's going to be nice. Because they got hell of people. And I like how they're not, like... You know, like, before with comic book movies, they wouldn't try to be... And I'm talking, like, early comic book movies, like, mm-hmm. early 2000s, where you you would know the backstory of a character and, like, how crazy it would be, mm-hmm. but the movies wouldn't go that crazy. Like, that Incredible Hulk movie, like... Yeah. 
they kind of, they still kind of kept it grounded, mm-hmm. which is fine. But they're just they they didn't go super crazy with it. But now I feel like the MCU they're they're going like full steam, like pedal to the metal. Mm-hmm. They're introducing characters that are like way down the line for yeah, because they can that that's the the benefit that they have is they can slow build mm-hmm. everything. Like it doesn't have to be like. Hey, here's the X Men movie where it's a fully established team, yeah, and you should know the whole thing. And then at the end of that movie, they throw in the person who's supposed to be in the second one, yeah. So it's like, okay, now here's your villain for the second movie, yeah. Or like, here's the new teammate. Like, now we like we can see like background characters in <laughs> in Hawkeye show up in two years and be a part. Like, it, it's just been a slow build to the team, like, yeah. It's like we got Captain Marvel, and like in the books, she went through different names, mm-hmm. you know, whole history, and then it wasn't until what 2013 we get Miss Marvel, yeah, or something like that. So, but in the movies, we're getting Captain Marvel, and then three or four years later, we're getting yeah. Miss Marvel that's, already. That's the thing, too, that I like is like because the movies have been going on for so long, like. There's actually a, a history that they can build off of. Yeah. Like in Hawkeye, like we see Haw- uh, Kate staring out the the blasted wall at Hawkeye, like shooting aliens. Yeah. And it's like in her life, that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Or was it 2024 when the show was supposed to be? So 12, 12. years, right? 10 that? years for us, though. So, yeah. Yeah. And then with Miss Marvel, like I think in the comics, it's like she, growing up, she idolize captain marvel yeah so like here in the movies oh i love captain marvel because i like i saw her save the world yeah in like when i was like 12 or something or however i think she's high school age in the show so i saw her save the world when i was like nine i mean and that that's another thing i I know we we got a issue to talk about but (laughs) Just something else I want to, I hope they explain at some point is how normal people get the information that we, we as a viewer see, mm-hmm. like in Endgame, how do they know exactly what's happening or what happened? That's what I, I always wonder that. Yeah. Like, Cause they talk about it just like, it's like, mm-hmm. just like they're there. Yeah. Was it, was it, was it no way home or far away home or far from home where they were talking? I think it was far from home where they were talking about like. At, like in the beginning, where like they show like the little in memoriam thing, mm-hmm. and they're, they're just going through the list of characters <laughs> that have like died. But it's like, where do you guys get this information? Yeah, like or even in WandaVision, they were talking about like, oh, I think that he someone mentioned like, oh, Wanda could have uh, did it or like mm-hmm. killed Thanos, and yeah. oh, but Captain oh, Marvel yeah, came yeah. in and swooped it like. Save the day or yeah. something. It's like was this live broadcast? Yeah, to everybody? that's that's the only thing you can think of is like there's news cameras like or some sort of cameras mm-hmm. that are just like there that are from a distance like watching to see what's going on and or for some reason there's a PR department for the Avengers that will go yeah. and just it's like uh, hey so this happened <laughs> yeah here's the play by play like it's like the president like they just have like a press conference like every yeah. Tuesday or something. <laughs> Like say so, what's what's been going on this week? <laughs> well, I mean, Wanda could have beat Thanos on her own, but uh, all this happened and all that. So it's like I don't know. Or is it like a, a Truman Show kind of thing? Where what if it's none of it's real? That'd be messed Whoa. up because that's. I I hate when they would do that when it's like. That, I know that's not the case. I know it's not the case, but like if they were to be like, oh, these past twenty years, you guys have been watching these movies. We're all going to erase that now and just. Now this is what's really happening, or yeah. something. I'd be, I'd be pissed if they did that. I would. That's when I would go to bed. I, that's when I'm going to start watching DC movies <laughs> and trying to like them. Oh yes, this is great. <laughs> Batman versus Superman. Yeah, they're good. Let's go. <laughs> oh, third Batman in four years. Great. <laughs> that's where they need to do some multiversal stuff over there. You got all these Batman like <laughs> something. Have Batman be nice one day. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. <laughs> have Batman just become the criminal. <laughs> but what do we got this week? We have the private war of Doctor Doom. Victor Von Doom. 
honestly one of my favorite villains. He do, it it's funny because he doesn't really get a lot of what he wants. <laughs> like he doesn't win a lot. Um, every story that I read for the podcast that has him in it, he doesn't win. But he always talks about <laughs> the time that he did win. <laughs> <laughs> But like if you don't if you don't read any of the story, like he just looks so badass. Yeah, I think that's why I do like Doctor Doom is that he does look badass. Mm-hmm. He just sits there and like he doesn't have to do anything to be intimidating. He just sits there and looks badass. He's he's actually strong, especially in this story. Like, yeah, yeah. Most of the time, he just doesn't get what he, he wants, except for that Christmas episode. That's old age right there. (laughs) (laughs) I I felt that one like go up my leg. (laughs) All right. So, yeah, this is a private war of Dr. Doom. My brother here and I decided to split the issues Mm -hmm. between the two of us because it was a long read. Yeah. Like 13 issues, I believe. So You got the first half. I got the second half. Let's get started. All right. So it does jump between two series. So we're jumping between, yeah. uh, was it Marvel? So uh, the, the super, super villain, villain team up, yeah. Um, which is kind of funny that it's called that because it's Doctor Doom and the Submariner, yeah, Namor, and it's like they go back and forth with him being a hero or a villain. But who they, cares? He's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't uh, know what they want him to be. So it goes between this series and the uh, at the time the current Avengers series. Yeah. So, uh, in the first one, we're doing Supervillain Team Up issue number five, I believe it is. Yes. Yeah. So, in this one, it starts off with, uh, you know, Reed Richards from Mr. Fantastic doing his thing in the lab, mm-hmm. sciencing it up, trying to find some new science for him to be fantastic at. And then, who crashes through his window? But Namor, the Submariner. Huh? And <laughs> Reed turns around and says, good lord in heaven. The Submariner. <laughs> and <laughs> crashed through my my window on the ninety eighth floor of this building. <laughs> you would think he would have like I don't know, shatterproof glass or like something in his lab to yeah, make to I mean be... <laughs> you have people coming to fight you all the time. <laughs> something that just makes your place a little bit more secure than the neighbor Three floors down. That's what you would think. I mean, you have floors that turn into ice. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> bombs that are ready to just go off whenever you want them to. But you went in bit and you you went cheap on the windows. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably because the landlord is like, listen, man, they're gonna break. I don't care what kind of windows you put there. <laughs> they're the sugar windows that they use for like stunt movies. <laughs> Johnny just like tries. He has a uh, band throw them through the windows so they can like <laughs> practice stuff. Johnny, bring another window up. Uh, so, anyways, so Namor crashes in, and he he's not looking too good. He's like, Reed, I need your help. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to make it. <laughs> so Reed's like, All right, let me put you in this tank of water I have just in my lab. Yeah, so he just dumps him in there. Just another thing in his lab. <laughs> and uh, in the issues prior. Uh, Reed had made a suit for Namor because he can no longer technically be amphibious. Yeah. He needs water to survive now. Mm-hmm. But uh, Reed built a suit for him that allows him to pretty much just wear the suit and he can be amphibious again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it would mean he can just he can be on land for yeah however long and yeah and water however long. Um, but now the suit's not working and Reed has no idea why and it should be working, mm-hmm. but. There was some some fights back in a couple issues that he may that may have done it. Yeah. So Reed puts him in the tank. The other uh, Fantastic Four members show up. The thing is ready to fight just because he sees Namor, mm-hmm. and so is Johnny. Uh, they show up and it's like, "What's going on?" And Reed is just like, "Hey, uh, he just showed up, <laughs> crashed through the window. Uh, no, he's here. <laughs> my suit is not working for him. So let's try to figure out what's going mm-hmm. on." Uh, Namor pops up and basically explains that he was flying around one day. <laughs> Doom pretty much shot him with a laser and said, hey, uh, that suit's not going to work for you. I changed your DNA. <laughs> You're going to work for me now. We're, we're friends. 
I help you out. <laughs> and if you don't, then I'm pretty much going to destroy your city. Dead and done. No, no choice in the matter. It's just... All right, I'm yours. You work for me or your city's trashed. That's it. And so Namor just like, fine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boss. He's like, if it's me or my or my my kingdom, I'm going to choose my kingdom over me. So mm-hmm. whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. And so Namor traveled to Reed with us thinking, okay, he's going to Reed for help. Mm-hmm. But really, Doom sent Namor there as... A message, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so basically saying, hey, I've done something to this man that you can't reverse, and I know you can't <laughs> reverse it, but I just want you to know that I did it, and I want you to know that I know you're trying to fix it right yeah. now. So now, like, the channel, like, I'm challenging you to fix it. Yeah. And so Reed is like, oh, this is a challenge. <laughs> and so this is where it becomes like a pissing contest, because yeah. Doom is pretty much just egging him on and reads like okay well i gotta try to solve this like i can't I do anything else before i solve this i have to save namor mm. and so doom he he's telling the fantastic for all this from latveria he's telling him through hologram yeah and he, he basically it's funny because he walks through town i guess he just has a hut in the middle of his of the town mm-hmm. that he broadcast his holograms from <laughs> Because he just walks out the hut like it's nothing. And the people in the town are like freaking out. Yeah, they're running from yeah. him. <laughs> it's like... Like dropping all their stuff and running. And he's just strutting downtown. <laughs> he he walks through that town like... Uh, what's Which Spider... Uh, Spider-Man 3? Yeah. Yeah. And he's he, just walking through like... He does a, a Bully Maguire yeah. walk. <laughs> <laughs> nobody's interested in being this guy's friend he's finger gunning everybody and just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so they, he walks back to town but the townspeople like they're so afraid of him that mm-hmm. they just follow him yeah like they're f- afraid of him <laughs> but they're like this guy is gonna kill us if we don't so yeah. out of fear they follow him and he, he turns around before he gets in his gate in the gate of the castle and he just says Today, the Submariner. Tomorrow, the world. <laughs> Which means nothing to any of these nothing. villagers. They don't know anything. <laughs> the Submariner? What is this guy talking about? <laughs> like, does he want to become the Submariner? We don't know. <laughs> and so, back at the Fantastic Four lab, uh, Reed's having the whole team help out. He's having the thing move machines around. Uh, Sue's putting force fields around him because he's working on dangerous stuff. And then Johnny's just sitting in the window. <laughs> I don't know. He, I think he might have a crush on Namor or something. Because he sits in the window and he, he's thinking to himself. And he's sitting in there like he's like in the notebook or something. Yeah, he's like love, he looks like he's like love struck. And this is the exact quote. Hmm. Haven't seen Subby back in his swim trunks in a long time. You know something? He looks good. <laughs> yeah, I read that and I was like... <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess like I read it and I was like I don't remember the female George being gay at some point I don't remember it's okay but yeah it's fine like, but it just came out of nowhere yeah like I don't think I've ever like seen anybody in swim trunks and like no, I haven't seen him in swim trunks for a really long time he looks good like that <laughs> and then in the next one in, so he says that in the next panel he says I couldn't tell Reed, but the blue getup makes the subby look like he's the gang leader from the Bronx. <laughs> what? what? What is the point of that? What's the point of having that in there? <laughs> Those two panels made no sense. Like, like what? why do you think that Reed's feelings are going to get hurt by you saying that, hey, that blue looks like the gang leaders over in uh, in the Bronx? Okay, well, I made the suit. And so fuck you. <laughs> also, like, who's like, who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, it's no more. You think he's just? You think he's flying back to the Bronx after he leaves here? Oh, hey, what up? Like, you think he's run? He's walking to the bodega after this, and he's gonna have some issues over there. And what's his get up with? What's his issue with the Bronx? Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, in that panel, Johnny says that, but then he notices somebody across the street. Watching the building from afar. So he uh, flames on, flies over there. 
And he starts looking around the rooftops, and he runs into a new character we haven't seen before called The Shroud. And uh, we get this later on, but I'll just explain it now. His origins are pretty Batman-y. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad you brought that up, because <laughs> I put that in my notes. He's basically just a Batman with, like, floppy ears. Yeah. And his his background story is exactly... Exactly Batman's. Batman's. Except he's not rich. Yeah. And he doesn't have all the gadgets. Yeah, but if you know Batman's origin story, just apply it to this guy, and that's... Yeah. And he, he wears pretty much all black. He wears all black. He has the same cutout where his mouth is and yeah. everything. Just no pointy ears, no bat insignia or anything. Yeah, and his and, parents got shot after seeing the show. And he's blind, I think. Yeah, he's blind. So he's like a little... He's like 1% Daredevil, 99% <laughs> Batman. Uh, but essentially, Human Torch runs into the Shroud, and he doesn't want to... The Shroud doesn't want to basically tell him who he is. He's mm-hmm. just like, get away from me. This has nothing to do with you. And Johnny's like, no, I'm not taking that. So they have a short fight. The Shroud kicks his ass. Johnny tries to burn him, but he has an asbestos-lined cape. They, they had these superheroes <laughs> set up for cancer. I was thinking They're about all going to get cancer. When he said that, I was like, damn, dude. like You're just wearing asbestos. Yeah, yeah, we're in the late 70s right now. They've been giving these superheroes cancer for 40 years. I thought at least by now they would have realized it. it's not good for <laughs> I try, you. I try to think of the logistics of it all. I'm like, so is it like inside lining? Like, is there a layer of something else on there? But anyways, yeah, they have a quick fight. The shroud wins, um, but escapes as he uh, tries to suffocate the Human Torch's flames. So uh, Johnny comes to and realizes that he doesn't know who this guy is. He doesn't know who the Shroud is or where he came from or why he's even here, but he's not there anymore. Uh, we jump back to Reed in the lab, and he's sweating. Yeah. Literally, like, <laughs> drops of sweat. He's, I can't figure it out. <laughs> he's trying to he figure did. this out, but he, he just, there's just something that's not working. He can't figure it out, and he's getting pissed at everybody else because <laughs> <laughs> he can't do his own damn job. <laughs> you can't reverse engineer the suit that you made. So Johnny comes back and he's like, hey, I just had a fight with somebody on the roof and <laughs> he's been spying on us. And Reed's just like, I don't care. <laughs> Johnny, shut the hell up. He's like, get out of my lab with that BS. <laughs> I'm doing science over here, man. And Johnny's just like, wow, I guess I don't care. <laughs> and Namor, he is, this whole time he's still been in his tank. And at this point, it's. I don't understand his motivations, but in Reed trying to save him, he's just like, and this whole time, he's just like, I don't need this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so he breaks out of the tank, basically insults Reed. Mind you, he breaks out of the tank. He breaks through the glass of the tank. Yeah. That doesn't have a top on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah, he's already at the rim of the tank in mm-hmm. one panel. He's hanging on the like the, the <laughs> yeah. ledge of the tank. <laughs> And decides that when he wants to just go, he just breaks through it. <laughs> this man has no respect for people's property. No. And so, yeah, he, he, he's just like, listen, if you're not going to fix me, I'm just going to leave. I don't care how close you are, you know, what's going on. Mm-hmm. It's just not going to happen. So I'm just going to go die a free man. <laughs> <laughs> so he breaks the tank, leaves, and then starts flying away. But then whatever Doom did to him changed his chemistry it he's starting to feel the effects again so he's flying away he starts falling through uh this the, the city falling towards his death and then he's saved by a beam of light and doom's face shows back up in the sky hologram style and basically just says richard i knew you idiot <laughs> couldn't figure it out this is all my plan anyways you dummy <laughs> i knew you weren't going to figure it out i just wanted to see you sweat it and I'm going to take Namor back, and you guys are failures. <laughs> and that's where that issue ends. Uh, let's see. Issue number six. We're going through, in this one, a little bit more a little bit more action. So we next see Namor wake up in Doom's castle. And Doom pretty much explains to him that you're working for me now. There's no ifs, ands, buts. Like, whatever I say goes. Mm-hmm. And that's the word. And Namor is just like, fine, like. Do what you must. I guess I'll just follow you. And Doom uh, 
he basically, or the Fantastic Four starts coming back. And they're just like, I'm not letting Doom, <laughs> you know, take Namor. Like, we got to go save him. So they fly in the Fantastic Car. Uh, you know, they're getting shot at. They get attacked by Doom's robots and everything. They handle themselves pretty well. Yeah. The Shroud is also there as well, watching <laughs> from the distance. He, it, he used the, the Fantastic Four getting there as a distraction. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he timed that. And Johnny swats him again. And he's not really hiding because he's hiding right yeah. by the window Namor is looking out of. Yeah. Uh, and Doom, meanwhile, is having a, a meeting with a mystery person hidden in the shadows. Basically just talking about all the different devices, world-ending devices he has. Mm. And this person is like, okay, like, you know, we didn't really see you as a world power before. But, you know, now that you have Atlantis on your side, we're, we can kind of work with you. Mm-hmm. And Doom's assistant or advisor or slave, whatever you want to call him, (laughs) his name is Bella. He he knocks on the door and he's like, hey, uh, we got a problem outside. (laughs) And Doom just like kicks his ass. (laughs) He backhands (laughs) him. He's just like, don't talk to me. (laughs) He backhanded him. Hello, heart. Just for coming in and saying, hey, we have a problem outside. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so doom sends uh namor af- outside to go see what's going on namor and the fantastic four have a huge fight and namor backhands sue again this is supposed to i mean now he's definitely a villain yeah he's, he's this is the <laughs> person that he in previous comics this is the person that he fell in love with yeah and he backhands the crap out of her he says by the seven seas i did not mean to strike her so hard She's not invulnerable. You're super powered. <laughs> and then he has like a... This man is mental. Yeah. He is he not right issues. in the mind. No. After he does that, he says, I once loved Susan Richards, and now I treat her like a shark. Animal abuse is another thing. Yeah. Can I really go through with this monstrous fact? And then after that, next panel, just like, fuck it. Let's fight. <laughs> and so I he just starts go. fighting everybody else. The Fantastic Four basically... They take him down eventually, um, but mostly just because uh, Johnny's able to hit him with some fire, mm-hmm. and then the effects of uh, whatever Doom did to him start to take effect as well too. So they knock him out. They run to the castle and they're about to fight Doom, but then <laughs> this guy who works for the U.S. government, what's his name, Carrington, I think it yeah. was, yeah, uh, basically tells them he is an ally of the U.S. government, and you guys have been. Just doing whatever you want for like the longest. (laughs) So no longer can you come to this man's castle or even his country without authority from the from America. Yeah. And Reed is just like, Well, you're an American authority, so okay. All right. (laughs) So they they just they hop back in the ship. (laughs) Yeah. And take off. Not without Johnny and uh the and Ben having some words about it, but yeah. At the end of the day, they can't do anything about it. But the shroud has already infiltrated the castle, <laughs> so that's that's a good thing, uh, and that's the end of that issue. Number seven, though, we finally get the answer as to why the shroud is actually there. So we do find out uh, because now Namor is back in the castle and the shroud is there, and he tells <laughs> Namor his whole origin story, <laughs> how he came back from the movies with his parents. Parents were killed. He prayed and prayed for justice one day, and he devoted his life to becoming the. You he know, devoted his life to Christ. Yeah, <laughs> to, to finding uh, justice for his parents, and so he uh, ends up going to this temple hidden in the Himalayas, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, they devote themselves to like the darkness, and they basically brand his his face, mm-hmm. which make him makes him blind but it's okay because he's he he's one with the darkness now yeah and, but he still walks around and does everything like he can see so yeah <laughs> throughout this whole thing there's times where it's or i forgot that he was blind yeah yeah he's he's doing things that not even daredevil can mm-hmm. do <laughs> to be honest and this whole time he's he's telling namor namor just in a bath <laughs> he's at the side of the bath while they were just sitting there <laughs> and then so the shroud is basically he tells Namor this is his first mission and he wants him to have his first mission be him killing Doctor Doom yeah 
and Namor's in the bath, and he's just like, oh, I see. So you're insane. <laughs> and he just sinks himself into the water just so he doesn't have to hear it. Oh, I'm never going to get saved. <laughs> and then he's like, for a moment, I thought you were you might be here to help me. And the shot is like, well, I am here to help. I'm here to help you help me. Mm-hmm. And so he wants to break uh, Namor out, and then he'll work on getting the cure after. Uh, back to the Fantastic Four. Uh, they head over to uh, Hydro Base, which is Namor's floating island type. Uh, well, pretty much just it's an island. Yeah. Uh, where him and uh, other Atlanteans use as like their base of operations for mm-hmm. everything. And Richards basically tells him, "Hey, Namor is taken by Doom. That's where your guys' prince is. If mm-hmm. you guys want to go get him." Jump back to Latveria. Doom does some pretty creepy stuff. <laughs> he just walks into somebody's house and says, hey, I'm here to exercise my right as a leader of this country by yeah. taking your daughter. He Yeah, he walks in. He's like, hey, <laughs> your daughter? She's coming with me. <laughs> and they can't and do anything like, about it. Oh, okay. And then she, <laughs> she packs up her stuff and goes. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> it says, as your sovereign... Oh, yeah, as your sovereign Klaus, I have come to exercise my derote to some word, my absolute right to the company of any any woman in the land. And then the guy's just like, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Gretchen, go pack your stuff. (laughs) And then the next panel is Doom dragging this girl with his vicious hounds and her parents are just sitting there crying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's so it's pretty. I dark. mean, I know people did that, but just to see, to see it, it's just like it, like no one's gonna fight this <laughs> yeah. at all. I mean, you guys have guns, right? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, guns against him and that metal armor. Probably yeah, do it probably anything, wouldn't but, do anything, but still, but man, like you, my daughter, you gotta. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We're gonna have to fight. And then what makes it even more creepy is Doom is like, "Come, Gretchen, come, my child." Like, yeah. How old is this? Yeah. Girl? <laughs> so when I saw that part, I was like, "Oh, wait." <laughs> He said any woman. <laughs> <laughs> What's considered a woman in life period? <laughs> we do not want to know. <laughs> and so he he's taking her for a walk with his dogs and he just basically takes the dogs out to hunt wolves. Yeah. And <laughs> so he sets them loose and <laughs> he grabs he grabs Gretchen <laughs> and just shaking her <laughs> by the shoulders, <laughs> yelling at her. <laughs> but he's he's basically just explaining what his dogs do. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, do you hear me? <laughs> they listen to me. They do as I told them. <laughs> it's just like, you are insane, <laughs> Gretchen. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Damn it! And then that's when the shroud shows up and saves Gretchen from <laughs> being yelled at. Yeah. And so Doom is like, "Who the hell are you? Like, why are you here, <laughs> Batman?" <laughs> And he, the shot says, "I'm here to kill you." <laughs> and Doom is like, "Okay, let's let's just get this over with." So they have a, a fight. Doom's hitting them with pretty much everything he's got: laser beams, uh, poisonous darts. Uh, the shroud's pretty much taking all of it though, and mm-hmm. he's able to hold his own. He tries to get a couple hits in on the armor, but Doom is just like, "That's not going to work." Yeah. And so he <laughs> takes out his, I don't know what he calls it. It's not a, it's not a battering, but. He has yeah. devices like Batman. Yeah. For some reason, they're magenta. And he wears all black. I don't know why they're magenta. Uh, oh, they're, he took out his bomberang. That's oh, what it yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, and so, Doom deflects that. He shoots him with some poison darts. Uh, the Shroud dodges those. And then he throws a net on top of Doom. And there's a part where he says, okay, it says, and while you're trying to shake that off, here's my titanium net. And then Doom says, you simpleton, my armor boasts its own oxygen supply. I'll break free of this in seconds. What does that have to do with anything? I can breathe, you idiot. <laughs> I, I, was, I tried to like, connect it. I was like, so does the titanium, like, is it so heavy that he just won't be able to breathe? Or like, you does it give dummy. him extra strength? You think I can't breathe through these big holes on this net? I have oxygen in my armor. And then the Shroud uh, jumps over Doom, plants a bomb on, or like a titanium, some sort of bomb, mm-hmm. uh, on Doom, which causes his armor to heat up. 
Yeah. So he takes the chest piece off, and it's just his helmet, his arm sleeves, and his gauntlet, and his legs are covered, but his chest is open. Uh, and then a wolf attacks him, <laughs> but a wolf is attacking him, and his hounds are attacking the wolf. Mm-hmm. So they end up tackling him. There's a struggle, and they all fall off the cliff. The shroud saves Gretchen, and he's like, I did it. My yeah, first he- mission. I go did, home, Gretchen. I did what I said I was going to do. I killed Doom. <laughs> My life's mission. It wasn't his only mission. That was, that was like his main thing. <laughs> he wanted to make killing Doom his his main thing. And then now he can just focus on other stuff. Yeah. And so he goes back to the castle, saves Namor, uh, and tells him, yeah, we killed Doom. But then we find out Doom isn't dead. He was actually found at the bottom of the, li- or at the river mm-hmm. by... Uh, Namor's friends who are looking for Namor. Mm-hmm. And so they save Doom and uh, they basically say, you stole our prince as a prisoner. Now we're going to have you as a prisoner. Into the next issue, issue number eight, uh, Namor and Shroud are on the run now. Mm-hmm. So they're able to escape the castle, but Doom, everyone in Latveria is so afraid of Doom that they just, one, they know that he's quote unquote dead now, mm-hmm. but they're so afraid of him that they're just like, Okay, you can't just come in here and yeah. kill him. Like, <laughs> we're still loyal to him in some way. And so Doom uh, is in Hydro Base, and he's trying to explain away why he has Namor. And he's like, oh, I didn't kidnap him. He he came here willingly. We're, we're hanging out. We're friends. Mm. You know, like, just come on over to my <laughs> castle. I'll show you. Thinking that, you know, he's still in there. And so Doom is like, all right, I got to make sure everybody's still there. Like, <laughs> And he takes him to the castle, and... <laughs> Uh, Bella shows up again <laughs> to tell him, like, oh, we got a problem. <laughs> and Doom is like, you idiot, get out. <laughs> and they're like, you treat your your advisor like that? And he's like, oh, yeah, he's like my son. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> he loves to <when> slap <laughs> him around and call him an idiot. <laughs> it's just our relationship. <laughs> and then and then Bella's like, uh, besides, some, some mariner escaped. <laughs> and he's like, what did you say? You worthless would be gone? <laughs> And he he literally punches him and says, get out of my sight. And so, uh, yeah, they're walking through the castle. And Namor's friends aren't really, they're like, okay, this something's up. Like, this guy <laughs> is not who he says he is. And uh, we cut back to the Shroud and Namor just walking through the forest. <laughs> and the Shroud is just so relaxed. He's just sitting on rocks and he's like, yeah, man, we got this. Just chilling. <laughs> and Namor's like, I'm dying soon. <laughs> They're being, uh, and then the shroud's like, "Well, I got a, I got a jet. We can jump on. You know, we'll get, to, we'll get to New York in no time." Yeah. And then they show up to the jet, and the villagers just <laughs> <laughs> tearing it apart. <laughs> they got pitchforks and they, everything. He pulls back the, the big ass leaf in the bush, and, all, and the whole village is just literally tearing apart his whole ship. He's like, "Damn, I didn't see that coming." <laughs> Like, and oh, damn they got me <laughs> they're watching all this and they don't notice that a dog one of the uh vicious dog that the villagers has catches their scent and starts chasing them <laughs> which alerts the, all the other villagers of their presence and so they're running through the forest trying to get away from all these villagers but they know the villagers have the uh the advantage of knowing you know the forest mm-hmm. they don't know where they're running to they're just running just to try to escape and so they get to a bridge um cross it and shroud cuts the bridge just to make sure that you know they if they are going to be followed it'll take a while for them to get caught mm-hmm. so they keep going uh we eventually jump back to uh doom and his uh new friends on hydro base and pretty much he says that uh he can help fix the ailment that is uh, going on with some of the hydro based people because mm-hmm. they some of them look like lizard people, yeah. And Doom is like, Well, I can turn you back into human looking people and if you want. I think he's from what I remember on previous issues before this started, before this story started, all of the city of Atlantis is in a coma, like all of everybody. So he was promising that he would help cure everybody from that. Who, who's watching them, like? When you're in a coma, you have to be under like medical like watch. Not in Atlantis, buddy. <laughs> it's all magic. Doctor Strange is watching every one of them. <laughs> and so while well, Doom is making all these false promises, he actually is talking to one of his advisors, Boris, 
and it's basically just saying like find trout and submariner and like get them yeah he has an earpiece yeah <laughs> <laughs> that reaches all the way to liberia <laughs> and uh we eventually jump back to namor and trout and they run into a circus and they're mm-hmm. like, okay, well, we can hide out here. And the runner of the circus is a uh, circus master, so criminal. Yeah. They were a normal circus. He uses his powers to, you know, do criminal stuff mm-hmm. and under the guise of a circus. And they see that Namor and Shroud show up, and they're like, look, we come in peace. You guys are, you know, we're not here to do anything. We just need to hide out. Mm-hmm. And then they mention Doom, and he's circus master's like, nah, I'm not. <laughs> if it involves <laughs> Doom, I'm not involved. <laughs> And so Namor, as short fuse he is, beats up a ringmaster, then gets in a huge fight with all the other people. Uh, they eventually overtake them and then take the costumes of some of the circus performers <laughs> and then use those as a disguise. And then they're in the circus for some reason. <laughs> and uh, they're in the circus. And then to their surprise, who do they see uh, the circus performing for? None Doom. other than Doom. And Namor's like, what the hell? You said you killed him. And Shroud is like, well, I I did. <laughs> I, I, I threw him off a cliff. I definitely did kill the guy. Then the cover's blown. Everyone sees that the Shroud and... Well, they don't know it's a Shroud anymore, mm-hmm. but they do know something's up. Yeah. And so the doom that's there it says, everybody leave except for these two. Mm-hmm. And that's where that issue ends. And then we're going to jump over to Avengers number 154. This one... Involves everyone's favorites, the world saving Avengers. So, little backstory: uh, Wonder Man is alive, and if you don't know who Wonder Man is, he is—he's a superhero, pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, super strength, super stamina, all the super stuff. Um, but he's actually related to Vision in a way. So when Wonder Man died, uh. Ultron used his brain waves as a, I guess, like a, a map for Vision's brain. Yeah, kind of like a basis for... Yeah. Yeah. And so when Vision was brought online, he had like the brain waves of Wonder Man. But now that Wonder Man's alive, it's sort of like a weird... Yeah, he was brought back from the dead. Yeah, and he doesn't know how. He just was brought back. And in previous issues, there was something called the, uh, the Serpent Crown. That was causing some issues. This issue starts with Vision dropping that in the middle of the ocean so no one can get it. Uh, the Wizard's also back from, I think, our team-up uh, from like one of our earlier issues. Yeah, the all-winner squad. Yeah. So the Wizard is... And back in the 40s. <laughs> he's alive. And, but he looks like he aged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only person. <laughs> so basically what happens is the Avengers uh, are being attacked by Atuma, who is also an Atlantean, mm-hmm. who feels like he is the rightful ruler of Atlantis. Yeah, I uh, believe we ran into him on one of the Namor stories early on. Yeah, and so he doesn't like Namor being in charge. He doesn't like him at all. So The quest for Krang, I think it was. Uh, oh, yeah, that one. And so he basically attacks Avengers Mansion, with a cool looking <laughs> super soldier. <laughs> uh, essentially, he wants to take the Avengers captive and basically use them to kill Namor so he can become king. Yeah. But if Namor kills the Avengers, then he just has to deal with Namor, which is already his issue. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he really needs the Avengers to kill Namor. <laughs> you didn't think that one through at all. <laughs> So, he, like I said, he sends uh, his super soldier. I think his name is Tyrak. Mm-hmm. He looks pretty badass with it. He really does. <laughs> he has chains and sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 12 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> and he has chains and sunglasses. Like gold chains and sunglasses. <laughs> and so he easily takes care of the Avengers. No issue. Like beats up Captain America, Iron Man. No issue. The Wasp and Yellow Jacket taken care of without any problems uh wanda already has a her arm so she wasn't really going to be too much help and beast is taken care of as well beast is also on uh the avengers in this run so the avengers are taken captive uh to a tuma ship and 
I think that's where that issue is. <laughs> there, there wasn't much in that one. Yeah, not really much going on that leads to anything. Uh, I think we jump back to issue number nine of the villain team up. Number nine is where I started, yeah. So, um, yes, so Atuma and Tyrak are doing their thing. And then super villain team up number nine. Um, we start with Atuma explaining that he... He kidnapped everyone in an attempt to enslave them so that he can beat Namor, like you said, uh, for the throne of Atlantis and begin his plan of world domination. So, (laughs) yeah, basically, like you said, he's trying to take over Atlantis. Um, We see every captured Avenger is trying to escape these collars that Atuma and Tyrak had put onto them. Um, Hank and Janet uh, try flying off and shrinking. Doesn't change anything. Um, they're still trapped. Uh, no luck from Captain America and Iron Man. Uh, they take to the sky. Or sorry, no luck from Captain America. Iron Man takes to the skies as well, and he doesn't make it far. Uh, we cut to Latveria, where we find out that the doom that was overlooking the circus is actually an imposter doom. Rodolfo. Rodolfo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the imposter doom is now standing in front of uh, circus costume shroud and Namor, who's passed out on the floor, and he's wondering, dooms the fake doom's wondering what the hell's going on here. Yeah. So the fake doom uh, pulls the shroud to the side, and he's like, "Hey, so you're the shroud, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "I have." Um, he's like, "I have an antidote for Namor right here. It'll." Fix his whole ailment that's going on right now. <laughs> so they give it to him. They give it to Namor, and the shroud is like, "Oh, it's working. Thank you." In the most sarcastic way possible. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fake Doom is like, "Oh, good," because I had no idea what was actually in that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's like, "I'm glad that it's working." <laughs> and then you could just give him a bottle of Dasani <laughs> or something. It's like, uh, this this should help, right? Yeah, here you go. And then he takes off his mask, and the Shroud's thinking, like, oh, like, I thought I killed this guy. <laughs> he still doesn't know that it's this fake one. <laughs> and then he takes off the mask, and then he's like, wait, who the, who the, who are you? And then he's like, <laughs> my name's Rodolfo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> He says, my name is Rodolfo. Uh, he said he's the rightful crown prince to Latveria. Uh, he once went into battle with some others against Doom, thinking that they were about to topple the kingdom of Doom. Uh, he had the rug pulled out from under him, and he's been hiding in the Latverian mountains since uh, since this happened with his fellow comrades, which has been a while. And now since Doom is stuck in Atlantis and everyone in Latveria thinks that he's dead... Or there's rumors that he's dead. Rodolfo snuck in uh, during the night and replaced and <laughs> figured that he could be a replacement Doom. So when Doom, when you said that Doom had uh, called over to forget what his name was, Boris. Boris. Boris had set up the the ruse of Doom still being alive, and they were going to use a Doom bot. Yeah. Yeah. Boris set it up so the Doombot would be acting as Doom, and the way he programmed all the Doombots, they acted exactly like he would have. But um, the fake Doom Rodolfo snuck in in the night, kicked out the Doombot, <laughs> and and just started taking on the the spot of Doom. <laughs> just imagine like him coming in like full armor. <laughs> He's like, "Hey, bud, uh, your services aren't needed anymore." Like, I have a I have a family to feed. <laughs> what am I going to do now? <laughs> Just like walking into the door. It's like I don't know. Look, I don't know. This man. is all this is all to scale. This is all uh, through the union. You got to talk to them. Yeah, Doom sent me here. I, I'm just doing my job. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, well, I tell my wife. <laughs> I don't know. Just she said I needed to keep this job or she'll leave me. <laughs> talk to Gretchen. <laughs> Gretchen's at the front desk. She has all of your paperwork. She can help you out with any of that stuff, okay? <laughs> uh, Rudy, uh, I'm just going to call him Rudy from now on because I don't want to keep saying Because that's what the Shroud calls him, too. Yeah, that too. So now Doom is stuck in Atlantis. Everyone in Latveria 
is assuming that the real Doom is dead, but there's, they're not sure. There's rumors of it going around. Rudy snuck in during the night, replaced the Doom bot, and now he's acting as if he's Dr. Doom. Uh, so the Shroud wants a piece of this action, <laughs> and, and he counts. He just counts himself in. And Namor, in a very Namor way, says, uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not dealing with any of this stuff. I'm out of here. And then we see this guy, the Orbiter. He has a spy sneaking around um, Doom's castle. Mm -hmm. And the Doom had just heard everything that, that these guys were talking about. And back in, so we cut back to the Hydro base, and that's where the real Doom is. And he's sipping wine. He's relaxing over there. He's biding his time. And uh, these two girls, Rita and Tamara, are the two girls that are... One of them is... Uh, Rita is Namor's sister. Her actual name is <laughs> Namor Rita. <laughs> um, and Tamara is, I believe, a love interest Yeah, of Namor's. But they're, they're basically the ones that are keeping Doom in place over there. So um, they walk into the where they have Doom trapped he's supposed to be working on a cure for them and they like hey man you've had enough time in here to to figure out <laughs> this whole cure and they're like either you hand it over or you're gonna die and he says oh yeah uh that reminds me uh here's the cure <laughs> 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 but uh basically secretly he he turns around when he goes for the cure and he uses basically what I guess essentially it would be an Apple Watch with a <laughs> video camera on it to communicate uh, with his accountant <laughs> about an approved sale that he just made. And Rita shoots his watch to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> he grabs Rita ready to break her arm because that was his favorite watch. <laughs> and then when the and then that's when the Avengers blast through the wall and Doom says, "Hey, uh, like you guys are going to commit a crime fighting me. <laughs> like I'm." safe right now and then iron man says cool um but we're not here for you we're looking for no more and then you need to like you just need to hand them over we're not here for you do whatever you're doing yeah when that part happened i was like they're not even trying to explain like hey we have these collars on that no you know we're being forced to do this they're just like give us no more <laughs> we just mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're like and they're there for no more because um, Atuma. Atuma had sent them. Yeah. And he was like, you're going to either get into more for me or you're going to die. And he said, he's probably on Hydro Base because he has no idea where yeah. Namor it really is. So they say, hey, hand him over. Everyone there is thoroughly confused. And they just all start just fighting with each other. <laughs> uh, Doom sets a force field around himself, uh, as around himself and Rita, Tamara punches Wanda's lights out. <laughs> Hank and Janet try to sting Tamara, and Cap is just there with his shield, just not really helping much. Uh, <laughs> He's just like walking. Somebody shoot at me! Somebody shoot! At <laughs> somebody me. hit me! Somebody hit me! I can block it. I swear. <laughs> I promise. Watch, watch and strike. <laughs> so the uh, at this point, the Avengers are getting beat pretty bad. Cut from there. And we cut over to Namor being fired at by two planes after because he took off. He left. Oh, yeah. He was like, I'm not kicking it with you guys. Uh, <laughs> I got what I needed. I'm good. And um, so he's flying through the air. And then he starts to get fired at by these two planes. And then after ripping one of the planes apart, he hopped onto the other plane. And he's like, why are you shooting at me? I, I have no issues with you guys. <laughs> and the guy is like, oh, we thought you were a Tuma. <laughs> He said uh, Atuma is trying to get a special weapon from the Maryland Research Center to become invincible. And then that was the end of that issue. So the next ones I did were Avengers 155 and 156. And this is pretty much where I stopped numbering what I was doing because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Until the very last one when I remembered. So yeah, um, Atuma is trying to get that uh, device that makes him invincible. And now... Uh, Doom stands over uh, a beaten down Iron Man and says, the rest of you Avengers really better learn quick that I'm not here to mess around. and Otherwise, you're going to end up like Iron Man. And he has just like his foot just rested on Iron Man. Like he just uh, took over somebody's land. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, that makes Captain America. And the rest of the Avengers just go nuts and start fighting, but they don't win. 
<laughs> Doom puts Captain America in restraints and says again, what the hell are you guys doing here? If you, if you don't want to fight with me, why are you here? And then Cap, with barely any, with barely any energy, says a tomb is sent us here. And that's when Rita loses it. And she says, uh, she tells, she tells Doom, listen, you're the only one who can beat a Tuma aside from no more. And he's like, yeah, you're probably right. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I think just having somebody believe in his power <laughs> was enough for him to say, yeah, you're right. Let's go. <laughs> and then after that, Cap, Wanda, and Vision find out uh, that the room Doom had been locked in this whole time is weakening the slave collars that they had on. And Wanda helps Captain America get his shield using her powers. Uh, she picks it up and gets it to him, who uses it to free Vision from his collar. Um, but when Vision gets out of his collar, he doesn't help anybody else get out of his. He just he phases out and then flies off <laughs> and leaves everybody else there. So everybody's like, like, what the hell, man? Like... You were supposed to, you were the one who was going to get us out of all of this. And he just flies off. <laughs> and then we cut to the waters off of the Maryland coast where Atuma is now there. Um, and he's attempting to steal the device that the research center is using to grow plankton faster. So they're using this device to grow plankton faster. And somehow he's going to turn it into a device <laughs> that makes it, makes him invincible. <laughs> So right before Atuma gets the kill, um, because he yeah he's going in there blasting people like normal people. Uh, so yeah, right before Atuma gets the device, the Avengers C team, which is Beast, Wizard, and Wonder Man, show up and they start actually winning. And then right when they have Atuma against the ropes, <sighs> our buddy Namor shows up, <laughs> and Atuma tricks him into thinking that the C Squad are here with him. And Namor ends up beating the wizard and the beast in like two seconds, <laughs> like quickly. And then Wonder Man isn't going down without a pretty strong fight. And then while he's fighting Namor, Atuma takes off with the device and Beast decides that he's going to follow Atuma with the little energy that he has. He follows Atuma. So now Wonder Man and Wizard are finally getting the upper hand, uh, but they end up knocking Namor unconscious. They kind of get the win there. But we cut to Vision, who just flew off and left all his friends there, making his way to Doom to try to broker a deal. He wants Doom and the Avengers to join forces against Atuma and his beefed-up security guard, Tyrak. Uh, back in Maryland, Wizard and Namor have a catch-up session since they haven't seen each other since basically the All-Winter Squad when we read that so they haven't seen each other in like almost 40 years so they're catching up with each other and then they decide that they want to head to hydro base together and figure out what the hell's going on over there and then back over at the hydro base doom is there taking all of the slave collars off uh while vision is for some reason vision's being a real bitch to wanda yeah a lot and even in a couple of the other episodes we've had with avengers issues he ends up being a real bitch. Or like he's a very, lot. yeah, he, he's very robotic, but like it just, yeah, it comes off as him being. He's an always asshole. having like this, this weird crisis where it's like, I'm an android and I shouldn't be able to love, but I do. And I love her, but I can't let her know that I love her as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, <laughs> he's like, you look pretty, huh? I, I mean, you look shitty. You look pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I love you I'm sorry what <laughs> I would love for you to leave me alone <laughs> I would love for you to die <laughs> <laughs> I would love it if you would get out of here please and yeah he's just like a real like asshole to her, like all the time so yeah basically Doom and Vision were able to get that deal in place so Doom's taking off all the slave collars and then this story made me think that Tony isn't, like, Iron Man isn't, like, the genius playboy philanthropist that they make him in the movies, in the comics. Because uh, him and Doom are, like, looking at the Hydra base radar. And then Tony says, how are we going to find Atuma? And then Doom said, um, how about this big flashing circle that's on the radar? 
And then Tony was just like, oh, yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Like, you're supposed to be a genius. Yeah, you. They those two should have been, like, tearing apart that computer to, like, make something, some super computer or something. Yeah, like, now that it said, Tony's staring, like, they look like the two dudes from 21 Jump Street just staring <laughs> at a computer. Why are you so stupid? <laughs> like they just turn the computer on, and they're like, whoa, we're on a roll. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> did you? So, yeah, the... They're looking for Atuma. Meanwhile, Beast has finally caught up to Atuma's ship, but now he just has to be like a stowaway. He's hiding in like the the darkness of the ship, and that doesn't last long because they they find him pretty quickly, <laughs> and, <laughs> and he ends up catching like the ass whooping of a lifetime. <laughs> like it was bad. And then the more Wizard and Wonder Man are hovering above. The location that uh, Beast had sent them to right before he got his ass beat. And uh, Namor, they're waiting up there, but Beast sent the location. But he was like, I'll let you know when it's okay for you guys to come down and help me out. But because he got beat, he can't do that. So Namor is like basically in the sky hovering above like, when is he going to send the signal? And he's like, Namor is tired of it. He's like, whatever, I'm going down. And then Wonder Man's like, well, you're not going down there by yourself. Let's go. And then as soon as they get down there, uh, Namor gets handled by Tyrak instantly. <laughs> and then Wonder Man just watches him <laughs> lose. <laughs> he also sees that Beast got beat down and just watches him get carted off. <laughs> but never does anything. <laughs> and then uh, Wizard's still up top. Um, because he just had a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> he shouldn't be in the field. He shouldn't. And so Wizard sees that a ship is flying up, and then to his surprise, like a, a ship is now coming towards him, and like to his surprise, it's the rest of the Avengers and Doctor Doom, and uh, uh, they fly the ship <laughs> just straight underwater. Don't stop and say what's up. They just go straight underwater, and they just start blasting away, and then. <laughs> Tyrak shows up uh, when they start shooting, and he just starts handing out knuckle sandwiches to <laughs> everybody. And then finally, Wonder Man decides that he wants to start joining the battle. <laughs> and then him and Vision team up and hand Tyrak his first official loss. Vision and Wonder Man make it to Atuma, and they see he's already been knocked out. He barely has the energy to... T- Ty- or Atuma barely has the energy to say... That it was Doom that beat him. And uh, Doom stole the weapon that Atuma had originally stole. <laughs> so now the Avengers have to hop back on the Quinjet and chase down Doom. And Namor stays back and he's just gonna, he's trying to kill Atuma. He's, that's the only thing he wants to do. And then Doom, instead of going back to Latveria, took that stolen device back to Hydra base. And now he's trying to reverse engineer the weapon that he stole. And (laughs) the Avengers show up pretty quickly, uh, but Doom's ready to fight. But he doesn't pay attention to the fact that um, Vision had phased through the wall behind him and (laughs) just ruined the whole weapon. (laughs) The invincible device, he just ruined the whole thing. And then finally Doom turns around and sees that Vision's doing that and knows that he can't do anything with it. So Doom was just like, well, I mean, if there's no weapon for me to use, then I'm just going to get out of here. <laughs> and then just flies off. He gets back in his ship and takes off. <laughs> and no one chases him. So oh, we skip ahead sometime. And Captain America is on his own. He's running through the Latvian embassy uh, alone. Um, he's dodging robots, guns, all that crazy stuff that's in there. And he has something in his hand that he took from someone spying on them in the Avengers mansion recently. Uh, that can only be described as something that looks like a shake weight. <laughs> I thought it looked like a wrench, like a just a, a wrench that wasn't going to do anything. It, I guess you could say a wrench. That, that might work too. Um, but he he gets to the end of this hallway. He busts through a door and he sees Doom just sitting there on his throne, uh, drinking wine. And Doom's like, "Hey, do you want some?" <laughs> And then Cap says, hey, just stop with the games, man. I know this shake weight is yours. <laughs> Tell me what's going on. And then Doom snatches it like he, like it actually was his. And now he's embarrassed. And he realizes that, like, no, this belongs to somebody else. And then we cut over to Atlantis. And Namor is losing his mind. All of his people in Atlantis, uh, 
were rendered comatose by nerve gas uh, before the story started, like I said earlier. And they're all still stuck that way. I want to know, in the late 70s, do people actually like Namor as much as to give to put him in this supervillain team up and this whole story arc involving mm-hmm. him so much? Do people like Namor that much that they wanted to read this? I, you know, I, I don't know. Because I, I feel like because he was one of the first Marvel characters, maybe. But even still, this is we're forty years after the first episode that we did. Yeah, and he's he's a bigger bitch than ever. <laughs> like, like I can only handle so much of him. And I I had a, the other day I thought of like a like a celebrity comparison for him, but I can't think of who it is right now. Yeah, I'll figure it out. But he's just he's not an enjoyable character. No. Like, ever. When I have to read him, I'm just, like, dreading it. And everybody that listens to the show knows that we don't like him. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so yeah. So, all of the people in Atlantis are still stuck in a coma. The building that he's in, I'm, I believe it's Hydra Base, uh, the roof starts to crumble around him. And he goes out to see, what like, what's going on. Um, and then he finds out that there's an underwater construction team tearing apart his land. He wastes no time in attacking. He's wrecking pretty much every piece of machinery down there. He gets his hand on one of the construction workers and says, like, what the hell are you guys doing? And the guy pisses his pants, basically, <laughs> and says, Someone's, uh, someone called the Orbiter sent me down here, or sent me and my team down here. And Namor doesn't know who the hell that is. So the guy says, hey, man, I don't know. I just, I just All I know is that he's from Latveria. So Namor is like, hey, what do you mean? He's confused. He's like, the only person I know from there is dead. Because he still thinks the Doom is dead. dead. So we cut to Latveria. The Shroud and the fake Doom Rodolfo are running through Doom's castle trying to find the throne room. And then when they're caught in the act by some of Doom's actual guards, uh, the guards try to like kill the imposter. Because he's not wearing his mask for some reason. <laughs> so they know that it's not. <laughs> they know it's not actually Doom. So they try to kill uh, the imposter and shra- the Shroud. Uh, but Rudy's uh, own personal guards are actually able to hold off Doom's guard. So they make their way to the throne room. And Rudy's getting excited until they find that somebody's already sitting in the throne chair. And then when it swings around, the person in the chair shoots. And almost kills Rudy when the light shines on him. We cut to a completely different place on Earth. uh, Where Doom and Cap are flying to Latveria together. And Doom's heat-seeking missiles in Latveria start shooting at the plane that they're on. It's a whole bunch of action going on right now. This is where... (laughs) I can tell. (laughs) (laughs) This is where DeMarco started to uh, lose interest. That's where I regretted my decision doing this show. Yeah, and just be glad you didn't take the second half. Uh, so yeah, the Doom's heat-seeking uh, missiles from Latveria start shooting down the plane that him and Captain America are flying on. Surprisingly, Captain America can handle this uh, ship well enough to shoot down all the heat-seeking missiles, but he doesn't see one that's flying low enough to not be caught on the radar. So he hits the belly of the plane, causes them to start crashing, and then we cut back to the castle throne room, and we finally see who was sitting in the chair. And he tells the shroud that going forward, men everywhere will raise their hand to the new order of Fourth Reich and proclaim the Red Skull as leader. Oh no. Oh no, it's the Red Skull. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. So Shroud and Red Skull start battling it out in the throne room. Red Skull gets the upper hand uh, when one of his lackeys dumps Shroud in the back of the head (laughs) from behind. And then he picks up the Shroud to show him in high definition that in fact, that he in fact did not kill Doom when he kicked him off the cliff. So he's showing him um, basically in live action that Doom is still alive because he's on this plane. And Red Skull wanted to show the Shroud that No, you didn't kill him. I'm killing him now, shooting these missiles at him. And you can see now that his plane is crashing down to the ground. (laughs) 
it, everything is just like a how do I say this without getting too vulgar? Now it's just it's just a big pissing contest between everybody. Yeah, it's like, oh, you thought you could do that? Watch this <laughs> it, with everybody. Uh, yeah, so it's made very clear here that uh, none of these people know that the shroud is blind. Nobody. <laughs> Because he's <laughs> look at this computer monitor. Yeah, it's like he's like facing the other way. <laughs> he grabs him like, like by the back of the neck like a dog, and like points his head at the screen like, look, look, I <laughs> Doom is still alive, and the child's like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. I can't see us. <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's made very clear that nobody can tell or knows that he's blind. So Red Skull makes him look at the screen while screaming, look, look, <laughs> Doom is alive, but I'm killing him. <laughs> it's like this does absolutely nothing for the Shroud. Uh, so uh, Red Skull is planning to use Doom's hypno ray to brainwash everyone in the world to follow his order. We cut back to Captain America and Doom actually ejecting themselves from the plane. Just in the nick of time, but what they realize when they touch down is that they've actually been shrunk down to the size of mice, and they're surrounded by a snake ready to kill them. <laughs> but Cap comes through with the win to save them both. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm gonna. I know this is getting ridiculous for everybody that's listening, so I'm gonna try to float through most of this. <laughs> They reach the castle moat only for the floodgates to open. They get washed away. Cut back to Namor, who shows up at the ca- at the Latverian castle looking for Doom because he thinks that Doom sent the construction team to Atlantis. All he gets is Red Skull, and Red Skull immediately gets the bullshit. He says, I know why you're here. It's because Doom sent that construction team to, your, to tear down your home. Don't worry, I just killed him, and I inherited this big mess of a kingdom. <laughs> I can't believe that he would do something like this to me. And then Cap- Captain America and Doom survived. The- we cut back to them. They survived the flood and end up in the sewer under the castle. They're still five old sized <laughs> slowly making it to the throne room. Doom is pissed right now that Red Skull has no more there in his castle. So, oh, sorry, Doom and Captain America finally made it to a little vent in the throne room and see that Red Skull has no more there lying to him, basically. Uh, so Doom says, no, I'm not having this anymore. He's pissed. He hops in there and he starts shooting lasers at Red Skull's feet. But he's still like three inches tall. So <laughs> Red Skull is like, what the hell is this? He picks him up. And he's just going to, like, smash him on the ground. Uh, but Doom tries one last trick. He uses uh, Namor's indebted loyalty and says, I'll cure all of your Atlanteans if you bring us back to size right now. <laughs> and, of, of course, there's a button on the control panel that turns him <laughs> back into normal size. So Doom, Captain America, and Namor start... Oh, and the Shroud. Uh, get to business and they start beating Red Skull and his cronies in the hopes that Red Skull doesn't reach the control panel to start the hypno ray. Uh, but Shroud decides that he's playing for his own team here. So he tries stopping Doom from stopping Red Skull because <laughs> they're both evil. <laughs> <laughs> but Captain America isn't having it, so he jumps in and starts fighting the Shroud so, <laughs> so Doom can make the stop. And in all of this fighting, Red Skull still makes it to the throne, turns on a force field, protecting him from everyone and allowing him to do whatever the hell he wants to. Uh, little does he know <laughs> that Rudy is still alive <laughs> and he finds Rudy finds a device that has gone unnoticed by everyone. He pushes a few buttons and Red Skull has been teleported to an unknown location. You would think that we're almost done and we're not. I sure <laughs> wish we were. I sure wish we were too. <laughs> Everyone is joyful. They won, so they thought. Uh, the screen comes on showing where Red Skull was transported to, and he got transported to the moon. And now <laughs> he's looking right at the screen that's being <laughs> <laughs> televised in Doom's castle, and he wants to tell Doom that your teleportation device was redesigned while you were gone. And um, along with the tra- along with the control panel, so I can control everything from up here on the moon. 
<laughs> and now I have access to the hypno ray with no interference from any of you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are on the last issue. Thank God. I, you know, I told you earlier off mic that I really enjoyed this. And now that I'm reading it back, I'm <laughs> starting to think that I might not. When you said that, I remembered this part. Uh, these parts, I was just like, what What was enjoyable about this? <laughs> <laughs> this man, <Yeah. laughs> you said you enjoyed this more than the Spider-Man Superman. I was like, where? Yeah, I'm starting to realize I was wrong. <laughs> so, all right, here we are. Last issue. Doom is now racing to one of his ships uh, so he can get to the moon as quick as possible. They split up the team. So now uh, the Shroud is with Doom. Sworn enemies with each other are now teamed up. And Captain America and Namor are back in the throne room. Doom and Shroud make a stop at the Hypno Ray. Because uh, it's, it's basically a big satellite in space. So they stop there at the Hypno Ray first so Shroud can get out and try to dismantle it. And then Doom continues to the moon. Again, the Shroud is blind. And you just put him up in space on a satellite that he's never even... He didn't build this. We need you to punch in these... (laughs) Do this digital (laughs) puzzle in order to save the world. You're the only one who can do it. (laughs) It makes no sense. He's like, ooh, should I tell him I'm blind? Uh." Does he know I can't see? (laughs) So Doom takes off to the moon. Um, and Doom is probably the only person who knows exactly how the hypno ray works, and he left the Shroud there to figure it out alone, which doesn't make any sense. Nevertheless, Doom finally arrives at the moon. Red Skull tries again to shoot him out of the sky before he lands, uh, but of course, Doom ejects himself right before the missile strikes, and Red Skull meets him on the ground pretty quickly, ready to fight. They battle back and forth, both gathering gathering the upper hand respect. Shroud tries feeling around on the <laughs> on the hypno ray to see if he can figure it out, uh, but him messing with it starts the machine earlier than expected. <laughs> back on the moon, going back and forth, still uh, Doom is in a tough spot with Red Skull racing towards him on a speeder, um, but he thinks he has one more trick. He ducks the speeder and runs his ionic blade across the underbelly of the speeder. Uh, causing Red Skull to crash <laughs> into his spare oxygen tanks that he had up there. And the explosion starts to crack the helmet on Red Skull. So we cut to Captain America alone now, uh, because Namor didn't want to stick around again. Uh, so Cap's alone on a S.H.I.E.L.D. ship, uh, racing into space, and he sees the Hypno Ray completely dismantled <laughs> at this point, and Shroud just aimlessly floating around space. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so Captain America gets him into the ship and then he sees that he's been hurt pretty bad. <laughs> so back on the moon, uh, Doom is basically slapping around Red Skull right now uh, like it's nothing. With the last second chance... At Redemption, Red Skull uses his own ionic blade um, to pierce Doom's armor, releasing all of his oxygen, because his ox- his armor has oxygen, you dummy. Uh, think- and Red Skull thinks, all right, he finally has a win here. I got it in the bag, no issue. So he comes at Doom with the blade in hand to kill him, uh, but Doom has just enough strength to knock his hand, knock the blade from his hand, and somehow this causes an avalanche of moon rocks to fall on top of Red Skull. What's ju- what's just the, just enough strength to do? <laughs> just one little quick backhand. Just get that knife away from Damn me. Damn it, that was all the strength you needed to <laughs> knock this from my hand. Get that knife out of here. Damn it. So, uh, yeah, the moon rocks fall on top of Red Skull. Uh, Red Skull's minions come out to play too, uh, but they switch sides pretty quickly once they see what happened to Red Skull. (laughs) And Doom's like, do you want to end up like him, or do you want to just go? And they look at Red Skull, and they're like, we're just going to head out. (laughs) It's like, he's just laying there with like, legs, arms, face exposed, but just moon rocks laying on his chest. (laughs) 
help, help. And all of his boys were like, <laughs> not where I want to be. Sorry, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then um, Doom just hops on his ship. He tells the henchmen, uh, you guys can fly home, figure out your own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes a few of the henchmen with him. And he's like, hey, you guys fly the ship. I'm going to get some rest. <laughs> And then that was the end. And uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, misremembered some of this. <laughs> <laughs> this was not as good as I thought it was when I first told you. I'm just going to get into it. Webhead stamp of approval. Not approved. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <sighs> not by me. No, it started strong. It's definitely started strong, but it was, I don't know, four issues too long, I would say. Probably like five or six too long. <laughs> like, it, we probably they probably could have finished it in all of your part. Yeah, I don't think it, the the tumor thing didn't need to happen. No. That was, there was no reason for that at all. No, I definitely misremembered most of it. And then when I started reading through it and when you were going through it, even going through your part, I was like, and this is kind of long. And it's like, but yeah, the Tuma stuff didn't happen. No more didn't need to be there. No more didn't add anything to it other than he was just like him being in places just made other people show up. Yeah, I mean, it could have, it could have just been Doom, No More, and the Shroud. Yeah, I feel like that could have. We didn't need all the Avengers to show up. Yeah, it didn't add anything either. So and I, then the Red Skull thing at the end. Where did that come from? I don't know. I it's it's definitely not getting my stamp of approval. <laughs> After further reading, it's not getting my stamp for approval this week. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I, th- I thought last week when we did the Superman and Spider-Man one, I was like, we- we're starting off the year with two strong ones. And then we got to this week, and I was like, oh, we got a dud. A real dud. So no stamp for approval from either of us this no, week. No, can't do it. Can't approve it. You heard it here first, folks. First no stamp of the year. And I, I don't even... I Nobody has said this to me, but I don't want anybody to even think it. Like, don't give me the whole... Oh, you got to read the whole story to really understand. Like, no, this yeah. is an event. If, you, if I can go online and find every issue of what this event is supposed to be, then I, it's okay for me to read this individually. Yeah. Uh, separate from the rest of the story. If I need to go back and read some stuff to understand some things, then okay. But I don't. This isn't a thing where I don't. I shouldn't need the two hundred plus or the hundred and fifty Avengers stories before this to understand what I'm going through. Yeah, and if you think it's a good one, you read it. Yeah, you tell us what you thought. Yeah, you read this and then you tell us if it made sense and if you had a good time reading it. Yeah, go on the page or go on our website page. Leave a voice message, and then you tell me how this is a good story. Yeah. You tell me why Red Skull is involved. You tell me why any of the Avengers were in this. For what? You tell me why Namor is still in stories at any point. He's just... He just, like, decides not to listen to people and just causes issues. That's all... Anytime he's in a book, that's all. That's the whole main thing. He doesn't want to listen, so then the issue... The Fantastic Four shouldn't even have been in this. Yeah. Like, they were there for two issues just to say, hey, you know the law says you can't (laughs) do this, right? Well, the law's the law. Let's go, boys. All right. Sue, fire it up. (laughs) Like, it isn't... (laughs) We were there to see Johnny kind of come out. (laughs) To come out and fawn over no more. (laughs) And think that he looks better in his swim trunks than he does in a full suit. <laughs> hey, you remember that that uh, episode we did where Namor kept showing up in uh, like three piece suits? <laughs> 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 they don't have any idea what this guy really wants. <laughs> they just, just fucking doing everything. I feel like he's like you remember those old paper cutouts where like you would cut out the clothes and you just fold. Yeah, the, it's him that, and his yeah. speedo, and then every they give you like five different suits to cut out. Like put this one on him. <laughs> what do we got next week? Next week we got a story called Mad Bomb. I believe it's a Captain America story. I believe it's six parts. I think next week should be good because I think it's just like a. It's like it's. Part one of six, part two of six. Like, mm. it's a solid one story instead of, like, this. It just, it didn't need to be 12 issues. Uh, whatever. You guys heard 
that yeah. we're not giving our stamp of, of approval. You heard the story. You don't need to hear us complain anymore. No. We're going to be back next week on Positive Vibes. So uh, thanks again for everybody who's been listening. Check out our, our website, uh, webheadspod.squarespace.com. It's, I, I set that up pretty nicely. It's, an, it's a nice website. I'll say that. One day when I get my certificate on web design, I'll make our own website. I'm working on that, too. So maybe I'll let you make a page on that. Nice. Yeah. One day. I want to do, like, a um, like each time you put out an episode, I want to do, like, a rating. Like, have the listener, if they want, they can go in, give it a rate, you know? Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, or, like, a feedback page or something. Mm-hmm. And then we can use that. Well, shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll talk about this after. Yeah. But... Yeah, we'll we'll start setting you guys. This year we're gonna have a lot more stuff for you guys, more more ways to interact with us, uh, more ways for us to talk to each other about this stuff, and just have more comic conversations with more people. I'm trying to I'm trying to get on the I'm trying to actually surpass the the comic people on TikTok. I want to become friends with them. I want to get on their level, and then I want to pass them so they say you want to pull a shake and bake from talladega nights yep because you know what if you're not first you're last (laughs) and i don't like being last (laughs) it's not that's not a good place for me to be in my life and i i'm not gonna settle so 2022 it's gonna be a big year for us it's gonna be a fun year we're gonna kill it this year i'm trying to find a way for more just like last time i'm trying to find more Trying to find a way for people to be on without mm. it being like a special episode for like a movie or a show. Um, but I haven't figured it out yet. So if any of you guys have ideas, shoot them my way. Um, if you don't have ideas, then don't talk to me. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Follow us on Instagram at the Webheads Podcast. YouTube. On YouTube at the Webheads Podcast. Uh, check out the our, our website uh, that is linked in the IG bio. Uh, where can people find you if they just want to, you know, follow your daily antics? Man, my daily antics. Um, you can find me on Instagram um, at Stephen S T dot E V E N. Um, but you might have to message me first to just at least <laughs> let me know that you're following because of the podcast because. Uh, so I just get a lot of random follows from like spam accounts and stuff. So I just block it if like nobody says anything. True, true, same. Um, so at least just let me know what's up. And I'm on Twitter, but I don't remember <laughs> my handle on there. <laughs> so I'll give that to you guys next week. Um, same, yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, I got I think it's Demarco underscore Lamont. Yeah, you send me a request. I, can you message people before? I think so. Okay, yeah, send me a message before you say, hey, I'm from the show. Just hey, I've been listening to the show. I love it so much. I um, I want to follow your daily antics. And I sent the show to all my friends, and I want them to listen to it, too. Yeah. And I also work for Marvel, and I want to give you guys a contract. Awesome. So. Also, follow my other podcast, Memories Not Guaranteed. We are almost done with our second season. We'll be going into our third, hopefully soon-ish. But go ahead and, you know, catch up if you haven't listened in a while or just start listening. Uh, Our chemistry is growing strong. Our chemistry is A+. Yeah, we we tend to jump around a lot, but I think we're fun. And they also cannot remember uh, what days they actually come out on. That's not... I don't handle that part. (laughs) Hi, Juan. I got one job, and that's to be on the show. (laughs) I got one job and it's to show up. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, go ahead and follow that Instagram, that show. Uh, follow our Instagrams. Um, yeah. Just let us know. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, talk to you guys later. Later. Peace out. Bye. Bye.